What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp speed modeling video for you. So the video I was going to make today, I couldn't get the extension to load the way that I needed it to, so I'm just going to do kind of a quick model of a rooftop space that I found online. So um, I'll try to kind of walk you through what I'm doing as I do it, and we'll try to use some kind of smart modeling practices and see what we can come up with in about 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, and so what I always want to do when I'm doing something like this is I want to start by kind of roughing out the size of the space. So let's say for the sake of this video that this space is probably going to be about 20 feet long, and we'll go ahead and we'll go with probably, we'll go with 30 feet wide or something like that. And uh, we may kind of adjust that as we go. We may kind of scale it depending on the sizing that, um, the, the sizing um, of the way this kind of works out. But the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to come in here we're going to double click on this to select this and we're going to make this a group. And inside my component I'm just going to call this my ground plane. So and basically the reason that I did that is because I really don't want this merging with anything else. But what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're just going to draw a small curb off to the side. So and we'll say the curb is probably about four inches wide. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle across this face and we're just going to push pull this up probably about we'll say six inches or so something like that and I'm gonna take all of that and I'm also gonna put that in a group and that's something I like to do is I like to keep things organized as I'm going um, otherwise if you try to come back and a little later on try to keep things organized it can get really frustrating and really difficult to do that which is why I'm doing that as I go but you can see how I'm just using simple shapes like rectangles to come in here and model these things out and for this shape we're gonna have kind of a short wall maybe like a four foot high wall or something like that on the back side and so I'll just take that whole thing and I'll just make that a group as well and one thing I might do is I might come in here and just push pull this back a little bit so I'll just double click inside of this group whoops I'll just double click inside of this group and I'll just push pull this back and then I'm going to take this one I'm going to push pull it forward so you can see how I've got kind of the wall on the back side over here and so one thing I'm going to do on this side right here is I'm going to create a railing and for this one I'm going to use an extension called Instant Fence and Railing and uh, that's an extension from uh, Valley Architects which I've done a video on in the past. I will link to that in the notes down below but I'm just going to add a railing in here and uh, this is a really great extension um, because it just has a number of different railings in here and I'm trying to find one with kind of a cable or something like that maybe oh there we go maybe railing metal and I just want to create kind of a simple cable railing in here so this one ought to work okay so I'm just gonna select that and I'm gonna click on make fence And I think what I'm going to have to do in this particular case, because I think it wants this in a group, is I'm just going to split this into two pieces. So just like this. And then I'm just going to select them and I'm going to put them in a group. And uh, that's kind of odd to me, but we'll go ahead and model this railing out. And this is good enough for what we're trying to do right here. And what we might do is we might take this and kind of move it so that it's kind of flush mounted to the face here. And we'll just move this up as if it was bolted to the face of this curb. And we could have modeled this in here ourselves as well. Um, and one thing that didn't happen is this didn't get brought in as a complete component. So we're just gonna take these and we're just gonna kind of group them together just like this. And so I'm just gonna make sure that the railing this created is centered, it looks like it is, and we'll go ahead and we'll call our railing done. Um, I could probably do some other things with this, but I think this worked out okay. So we'll just kind of leave that as is for right now. And so what we have is we have our curb, we have our back wall, and we have our railing, which I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put all of this in a single group just to stay organized. So we'll call this railing, we'll call this back wall and then I'm going to create one more wall off to the side over here and uh, for this particular wall we're also going to say this is going to be about four inches thick and we'll just go from this point to this point and we're going to push pull this wall probably up to about six feet and I'm just going to triple click on this and I'm going to make that a group as well and so for that group we're going to call this one wood 
wall. And so we're going to assume this wall is going to have some wood cladding on the face of it. And there's a couple different ways that you could do this. Um, you could either just apply a material or you could also come in here and you could uh, uh, model out some little ridges in here and actually model the wood geometry. Since I'm pressed for time, I'm just going to um, add this in here as a material. So we have our general shape kind of roughed out. So what we want to do is we want to add some textures in order to make this shape or make this this space feel a little bit more complete. And uh, for a different model, I might come in here and might extend this out a little bit, and I might do that anyway, um, just because um, I wanna have a place for my camera to go if I decide to render this. So I'm just gonna take this plane real quick, and I'm just gonna move this line back probably another 15 feet or something like that, just so I have the space in here. Um, so we're probably not gonna do a lot of extending these different things, but um, at least that way, if I decide, it, it'll just kind of continue back behind where the camera goes. But I'm just gonna take this particular piece and I'm just going to make a copy of it down here. So that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and leave that kind of as is. Um, and I think we're good to go with that one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to apply some different materials. So for this one, I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to look, I'm going to look for kind of a tile like paver material, like a stone material that's going to look good in here. That's almost going to look like a, like a pedestal paver or something like that. So maybe this white square tile material will look, uh, look good. And what I want to do with this one is I just want to make these a little bit bigger. I wish there was a better material in here. Maybe there's a good... So I think I'll go with this rough concrete block material right here for right now. And you can come in here and you can change the sizing on that. So if you want those blocks to be a little bit bigger, you can come in here and change the size using the edit tab. But I'm also going to come in here and I'm probably going to apply the white stucco material to this wall. I'm going to find just kind of a regular concrete material. probably this concrete aggregate smoke to apply to my curb. And then over here, I'm gonna find a wood material that I can apply to this. So let's see, do we have anything? We may have to bring a different wood material in. We'll go ahead and go with this wood floor dark material for right now, um, which is probably the most realistic wood material in SketchUp's library. And so what we have in here now is we have kind of our general space roughed out. And so with our space roughed out, what we wanna do is we wanna start bringing in context models. And so before we start bringing in context models, generally what I recommend, and we can go ahead and erase out our default model. Um, before you start bringing context models in, let's take all of this and put that in a group. So that can be our actual space. So we can just call that our rooftop space. And let's just get that in a group so that we're not messing around with any of that um, a little bit later on. But now what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the 3D warehouse and I'm just going to go to window 3D warehouse and we're just going to start looking for um, different kinds of models. So like potted plant. For example, we're gonna find a potted plant and we're gonna bring that in and we wanna find one. This is why it's kind of nice to, um, this is why it's kind of nice to have your own library or collection of things selected. That way you don't have to go looking for things if you have things you already like. But like for example, I can take these potted plants and we'll just go with this, let's go with this middle one. I'm just gonna delete out the stuff we don't need in here, I'm just gonna take all of this and I'm gonna move this over so that it's kind of on the axis insertion point for this particular item, just, just so that this fits nicely inside of that box in there. But all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm going to place this in the corner and then we're gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy. So I'm just gonna select this object, tap the M key and click on this corner. Then I'm gonna tap the control key and we're gonna move a copy of this down to this point right here. And then I'm just gonna type in the divided sign and I'm gonna type in the value five and hit the enter key. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create five equally spaced copies of this object 
inside of my model. And uh, I will try to remember to link to a video about that in the notes down below. But I'm just going to take all of these and I'm going to put them in a group as well. And we'll just call this one potted plants. And we'll minimize that. And now let's go ahead and let's bring in We'll look for an outdoor table. And so what we're looking for is we're looking for a nice long outdoor table. Maybe something like this will be perfect for what we're trying to do here. So I'm just gonna take this table and I'm gonna drop that into my model. right here. And so if you wanted to, you could do the same thing with the move tool in copy mode where you could create another copy of this down across here so that you can have multiple different tables. And one thing I'm noticing here is um, my model's starting to slow down a little bit. Part of that might be because I have the outliner open. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna minimize the outliner um, just so that that's not, um, I'm gonna minimize the outliner because that can cause some performance issues inside of your SketchUp models. So I'm just gonna move this so that these are centered. And then I'm also going to add a couple outdoor recliners. And I like these, these are kind of large though. These are pretty large files and I don't know if we necessarily, we'll go ahead and bring that in for this one. Just be careful, an 11 megabyte file is a really big file and that can really slow down your SketchUp models. Since I'm having kind of a speed issue right now of trying to get this video done, we're gonna go ahead and bring this in. But I would recommend just being careful what you bring into your SketchUp models. But that's gonna bring this in and then I can just find an insertion point and I can click in order to place those in my model. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate this right here. And I don't necessarily like the way this is rotated so I'm just gonna use the move tool in order to kind of straighten this out a little bit. Uh, not a ton, just a little bit. But then we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna move this back. We're gonna move this down and then we'll use the move tool in copy mode to create a couple copies of this as well. Or maybe just one copy for what we're doing right here. And then probably the last thing I'm gonna do in this particular space is bring in some larger planners with some plants in the background. So I'm just gonna go to window, 3D warehouse and I'm gonna look for a wood planner box. And this is actually perfect because this one comes from SketchUp itself. And I don't really like the detail of the plans, but we'll go ahead and use it for right now. We're just gonna drop a couple of these in the background. So we'll just align this right here. And then for this one, I'll go ahead and I'll use the move tool in copy mode and I'll type in times three and hit the enter key, that'll let me bring in three different planners um, for my rooftop space. And so now what we have is we have this nice rooftop space in here um, that, uh, you know, we've been able to detail it out. Probably what I would do is I would take all of this and probably group these and then put them all in a group as well so that they're nicely organized. And I can go into the outliner and I can have both my rooftop space and also my furniture. It's definitely not a requirement, but it's something you can do. And then the last touch um, that you could do if you wanted to is you could come in here in your styles and you could find a style that's got kind of a blue sky in the background or something like that. Or really, if you wanted to, what you could do instead is you could go into your styles um, inside your watermark settings and you could actually add a watermark in the background. So I'm just going to add an image. I'm just going to add a background watermark image of sky. And I'm going to change the settings on this so that the aspect ratio isn't locked. And we're just going to make sure that this is put in here as a background so that it's behind the model space. And you can see how you've got this kind of a, uh, you've got this kind of nice sky background in here. 
off in the distance as well. And you might try a different image with like skyscrapers or something like that, but you can see how it's really easy to create this rooftop space that you could now take to a rendering program or something like that. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. I have no idea if this is gonna be helpful to anyone or not, but this is kind of a quick workflow for creating a great space that the, you could then take to a rendering program or something like that. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought, if this was helpful to you. If not, I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.